Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to stream output from an open AI API into your Flask app. So as an example, here I have this form input with a question or a statement that I'm going to send to the API and I can hit send. And then the answer just appears here in streaming. So as the API is generating the response, it will stream it here and display it as everything shows up. And as we can see, uh, it has numbers and everything, and it's not that long, but it's a much better user experience when uh, your users are waiting for the API to respond, if they can see the response as it's generated instead of waiting for everything to complete all at once. So that's what I'll cover in this video, and you'll see it's pretty simple to do. And if you have any questions about how to do anything like this or how to integrate something like this in one of your projects after this video, feel free to reach out to me. I have something called the coaching program where I work with people one-on-one -on -one, um, in their Flask apps, Django apps, Python apps, JavaScript, whatever you need help with, uh, I'm available to help you in a one-on-one -on -one situation over Zoom. So if you're interested in that, go to prettyprinted.com slash coaching or click on the link in the description below. So with that said, let's get into creating this example app. To begin, let me show you what I have so far. I have this simple app.py file where I have a create app function. I have the client for OpenAI, which I'll use to send API requests. And I have this single route for displaying a template, this template here, which is just this, this text input and a send button and the space underneath for the response for the API. So I already have my OpenAI key set up in my environment file. So that's taken care of. So let's start with creating a route to handle the answer from the API. So let me create a new route. I'll call this answer. And for now, I'm going to let this be both get and post. But when I finish, it will be post only. I'll use this for get requests initially just to test it. And then later, I'll show you what it looks like with only post requests. So I'll call the function answer. And the idea here is when you're streaming something, you need to define another function that will be basically returned uh, from this function, your route function here. So answer is the function and I'll define another function in here. By convention in Flask, it's called generate, but uh, this can be whatever you want. And the idea here is this generate won't return something, instead it will yield something. So it will yield the pieces of the response and then the flask part will take care of it. So I'll just put yield here and I'll go back to the uh, flask route function answer. And the idea here is I return the function generate, which I just defined here. And I can give it a content type as a header. So uh, the content type here is going to be text plain because that's the type of text that you get from the open AI. And also when I get to the JavaScript part, it's going to be expecting plain text. So I just want to add that header here uh, by passing it as a second argument uh, to return. So this is basically like a tuple when the second argument is the headers that I want and the content type is the only header. But the most important thing here is this generate function. So the idea here is I need to call the open AI API and then I need to set it to be stream true, which you'll see in a second. And then finally, I can loop over that string and yield the particular chunks in that string. So the answer will be generated over time instead of everything returning at once. So let me start by creating a variable called stream. And I'm going to call the open AI completion API. So that's basically the one where you can ask a question. It will give you a response. So I'm going to take the OpenAI client and then do dot chat dot completions dot create. So this is basically how you ask it a question. I need to give it a model. On mine, I can use GPT-4, but you can use 3.5 if you need to. And then you need to give it a list of messages. So if you're not familiar with messages, basically you can start off with a prompt. So you tell the AI something about how things are supposed to work before you have the user actually give messages. And then you have the user messages and then you have the responses from the, the AI. And if you wanna have a continuing conversation, then you just take this list of messages that includes the prompt, the user message and the response, and you keep appending onto it because the AI doesn't have any memory. So if you wanna include context from previous uh, questions and answers, then you need to add it to the list. But I won't have like a back and forth conversation. It will just be uh, one message here. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one message. 
Here, the role is going to be user. If this were a system message, it would be system. But for this, I just want a user and then content. So here I'm going to put the question or just the statement that I want to send to the AI. So in this case, I'm going to say in 500 words, describe the Flask web framework, right? So it's going to return 500 or so words describing Flask. That's the idea. And then for this to work, I need to put stream equals true. So if I didn't have this stream true, then the entire response will return at once. But with stream true here, uh, what happens is as the AI is generating the answer, uh, I will be able to see that answer being generated. I don't have to wait for the entire answer to be complete. So now that I have this, uh, what I want to do is I want to loop over that stream. So I can say for chunk in stream. And what I want to do is I want to yield um, pieces from the chunk. And what I want to do is I want to check to see if there's some content available. So for that, you can do if chunk dot choices. And here, this will be the first item in the list. And then it's delta content. And I can just say is not none. And then if there is something here, so if there's something in delta dot content, I can yield that. So I can say yield and then chunk dot choices zero, same thing above, uh, delta content, right? So this is all I need to generate an answer. So I'm going to send this in 500 words, describe the Flask web framework, and then I will be able to uh, generate the answer as it comes back. So now that I have this route answer, let's go over to the code and go to slash answer. And this usually takes a second. So like by the time you see it, it's gonna have like a paragraph or so, but then like the second half will get generated. So yeah, you see uh, for some reason in this browser, like it, it takes forever to load the first part, but then you can see like the rest of it is being generated as it's being returned. So uh, let's see how long it is. It completes there. So this appears to be about 500 words and it's a summary of what Flask is. So this is great, but this isn't actually what you would do in a web app, you would take this generated answer and you would put it somewhere. So that's why I have this page. So I wanna actually let the user enter the message here and then the response will appear in the section below. So this is going to require some JavaScript. So let's go back over and let's go over to the template and we're gonna add some JavaScript down here. So here in the script section, I've already created some variables that just reference uh, different elements on the page. So the body, which will be the place where I put in the text, the submit button, and then the input. So I can get the input. So the first thing I want to do is I want to put an event listener on the submit button that I have here. So I'll just do add event listener. And I want to listen for the click event. And what's important here is I need to use an async function. So typically in these videos, I don't need to use async for anything in JavaScript, but in this case I do because I'm going to be generating the things as they come along. So I need the async functionality. So I'll just do async here. And then I wanna get the event so I can prevent the default event. So I'll just put E as the only parameter and I'll use the arrow function uh, for this to uh, create the function that runs on response to a click. So I'll start with e.preventDefault, just so the form doesn't submit. And then what I wanna do is I want to send a request to my answer endpoint. And this will be the post request I was talking about earlier. So we'll say um, constant response. And then I'm gonna call fetch, but instead of calling fetch by itself, I'm gonna call the async version of it. So I need to await fetch. And then I can call slash answer. So the endpoint that I created in Flask and then I can pass in some options here. So I want to have the method be post for this. I want the headers to allow me to send JSON. So content type, and then it's going to be application slash JSON. So I'm going to send JSON to the Flask endpoint. And then for the body, I'm going to call json.stringify and I'm going to do a message, and then I'm going to take the input value. So this input element that I have here, so input dot value, and then that will send it over to the Flask app. So that completes my fetch. So this response won't have the full response because I'm using streaming here. So I need to be able to 
basically do something every time I get a new chunk in the stream. So to do this in JavaScript, uh, one of the methods is you can use a reader. So I'll just define it here as a constant. I'll say reader equals and then response dot body get reader, right? So I'm creating a reader out of the response and this reader will allow me to do things as things get added to the reader. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say let output equal an empty string because this is where I'm gonna store the message. And then I'm going to create a while loop in here. So just while true. And then I'm going to get the values from the reader. So there are two values that I wanna get. I wanna get done and I wanna get the value. So done basically means that there are no more values on the reader to be read. And then the value is the actual value that I'm interested in. So like the next value. So to get these, I need to call await on reader.read. So once again, this reader comes from response.body get reader. So I'm creating a reader from the response, which will be streamed in. So each time I read this reader, I'm getting like the next value. It doesn't give me all the previous values. It just gives me like the next value on the reader. So now that I have that, I can take the output that I have here and I want to append to it. So plus equals, and then I'm going to do new text decoder. dot decode and then the value. So what this means is I'm expecting plain text, which is this, and I just need to decode the value as plain text, right? Because this, because the value from the reader is not text, it's more of like a binary format, I believe. So I need to decode it as text so I can then add it to the output. So just know if I use value directly, it will be like gibberish. So I need the text decoder to convert it to text. And then what I want to do is I simply want to add this to the body. So I can do body.innerHTML equals output. So the way this works is output starts as empty. And then for each iteration of the loop, basically, it will read in the next token. So let's say it starts with the word the. So output starts as the, and then I add the to the body. And then let's say the next thing is the word framework. So the framework. So the new value will be the word framework and it will be appended to the existing output, which just has the word the. So then an output becomes the framework and then that gets added to the body. So there's no memory here other than me just appending to output. If I didn't do this, then the value would be different and it wouldn't show uh, the complete message. It would just show like one word at a time or even one letter at a time. So that's why I have to do this trick where I'm appending to output and then I'm displaying the entire output on the body. So finally here I can say if done. So if done is true, that means there's nothing left. So I can just return out of this entire function. Right, so let's save that. And then I need to go back over to the app and I need to add the part where I get the text so I can say data equals requests dot get JSON and then I want to get the message that the user typed in so data and then message and then I'm going to put this message here in the content instead of my hard coded one so let's try this now let's go over here let's refresh the page let's say in 500 words describe the Python programming language. So let's see if this works first time. I hit send and we see it's filling in. So now it's streaming from the very beginning. So Python and we see it's writing like everything here. And I'll just wait for this to complete. And looks to be about 500 words around here and I guess it's still going. Um, but I just wanted to say that oftentimes the OpenAI API returns text in the markdown format. Uh, in this particular case, there's no formatting necessary. Um, but if I say, uh, please uh, format your response in markdown. So markdown is just a formatting language basically. Um, let's see if there's any markdown here. Doesn't look like there's any markdown. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try again. So uh, in or describe the pros and cons of Flask 
as a web framework, format your answer in Markdown. Okay, so let's see if it formats this. Okay, yeah, so you see these hashes here and then like the, the numbers and the asterisks, this is Markdown. So if I want to display the Markdown in the HTML, I need to parse it as Markdown first because if I just do it like this, it just has like the plain characters. So to do that, uh, what I wanna do is I wanna bring in a library in JavaScript that can handle Markdown. So I'm gonna put this above my script tag and I just found one online, uh, the marked library, and I'm just getting it from the CDN. So for the body.innerHTML part, instead of just adding the output to innerHTML, I'm going to parse that output. So I can do marked.parse and then output. So I'll save this and I will just copy the same answer, paste it, and then let's see what it looks like now. So you see it has formatting now because uh, it's parsing this as markdown. So the two hashes end up as a header, uh, the asterisks end up as bolds, the numbers uh, get indented, and now you see what it looks like here. It looks a lot better. So if you want to display markdown, just use a markdown library. I'm using marked, uh, but any library that parses markdown is going to basically have a really simple approach to parsing the output as Markdown. Uh, so that's it for this video. I just wanted to quickly show you how you can stream OpenAI responses in a Flask app because I've had a few people ask me how to do this. So if you still have any questions on how any of this works, feel free to leave a comment down below. Uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.